In this video, I want to talk about the partial products algorithm for multiplying numbers as well as the standard algorithm. Let's consider a problem like 746 times 5. The standard algorithm says we multiply 5 by 6 to get 30. We write down the 0 and carry the 3. We then do 5 times 4 is 20, plus 3 is 23. So we write down the 3 and carry the 2. 5 times 7 is 35, plus 2 is 37. So we would have 3,730. Let's redo that with the partial products method. The partial products method has the same basic idea, except that we don't carry. We think of things in terms of each piece. So we would start with 5 times 6 to get 30. So we write that down. With partial products, we have to think of place value. So instead of 5 times 4, I'm thinking of 5 times 40, which would be 200. And then 5 times 700, which would be 3,500. And we then add those up. When we do, we have a 0 there, a 3 there, a 7, and a 3. So we get the same results. But the idea is here, I don't have to worry about the carrying that involves multiplying and then adding the carrying part. Instead, we just go ahead and multiply and then add it all up at the end. Let's try a bigger one, 158 times 23. The standard algorithm says 3 times 8 is 24, so we write down the 4 and carry the 2. 3 times 5 is 15, plus 2 is 17, so we write down the 7 and carry the 1. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 1 is 4. We then write down a 0 for the next spot, and then multiply by 2. 2 times 8 is 16, so I write down the 6 and carry the 1. 2 times 5 is 10, plus 1 is 11, so I write down the 1 and carry the 1. 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3. And then we add these up. So it's a 4, this is 13, so we write down the 3 and carry the 1, 6, and 3. So first off, why did I write the 0 here? Well, that's because whenever I multiply by the 2, I'm really multiplying by 20. So I have to write down the 0 to account for the fact that this is in the tens place, and it is in fact a 20. Let's do this again using the partial products method. So it starts the same way, 3 times 8. That's 24, so I write down the 24. The 5 is in the tens place, so I'm going to multiply 3 by 50. Well, that's 150. I then need to do 3 times 100. That would be 300. This 2 is, in fact, a 20, so I have 20 times 8. That would be 160. 20 times 50 is 1,000, and then 20 times the 1, which is in the 100s place, so 20 times 100, which is 2,000. And if we add this up, we have a 4 here. 2 plus 5 is 7, plus 6 is 13, so we write down the 3 and carry the 1. This is 2, plus 3 is 5, plus 1 is 6, and then 1 plus 2 is 3, so we get the same answer. So the standard algorithm and the partial products algorithm essentially do the exact same thing. The only difference between the two is here, we write down all of our products and then add them at the end. Whereas here, we are adding pieces of it as we go along through this method of carrying. So the partial products method is really good whenever you're first learning the standard algorithm and it helps you visualize exactly what it is that we're doing over here. When we wrote down the 474, what we were doing was going ahead and doing this 24, 150, and 300 all at once. The 3160, well, that counts for the 160, the 1000, and the 2000 all at once. So this is an idea of showing out all of the individual steps of how these numbers came to be through this partial products method.